man. I don't get this. I don't understand anything. Whoa! How'd you get my house? I'm a scientist! Since you're a scientist, can you help me understand meiosis? Yes, but first, you need to understand the purpose of meiosis is to produce sex cells for sexual reproduction. Wait, I thought that was mitosis. <laughs> oh no. The purpose of mitosis in humans is for growth and repair of cells. But in simpler organisms, it's for, for asexual reproduction. An example of asexual reproduction is budding. Budding is when offspring grows on top of the parent. Hydra, a freshwater plant, buds. As you can see in this picture, cells start to grow on the side of the parent hydra and eventually turn into an offspring. Another example of asexual reproduction is binary fission, also known as prokaryotic mitosis. Binary fission is the reproduction of prokaryotic organisms. The process of binary fission is shown in the picture. Mitosis can also be used for regeneration. Regeneration is the process of growing back body parts. Unlike humans, starfish, lobsters, and lizards can regrow body parts if needed. This starfish has lost one of its five legs. It is now beginning to grow it back. Lobsters can lose claws during fights. This lobster is regrowing a claw because it lost a fight to that huge lobster. This lizard is regrowing its tail. A planarium is a worm that can regenerate itself after being cut in half. Scientists in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts are trying to prove that you could cut a planarium up to 80 times and all 80 pieces would regrow. There are 11 different phases of meiosis. Interphase, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, cytokinesis 1, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2, and cytokinesis 2. Meiosis can be divided into two parts. Meiosis 1, where the homologous chromosomes separate, and meiosis 2, where the sister chromatids separate. Before I explain the steps, understand that most human cells are diploid cells, which means that they have 46 chromosomes. Half of these chromosomes came from the father, and the other half from the mother. If a cell has half the number of chromosomes it is supposed to have, in this case 23, then it is called a haploid cell. A sperm and egg cell both are haploid cells, and when they meet, they form a diploid cell. Now back to meiosis. The first stage of meiosis is interphase. During interphase, the cell gets ready for meiosis by duplicating its chromosomes and centrioles. The second stage is prophase 1, which is the longest part of meiotic cell division. At the beginning of this stage, chromatin, strands of DNA, coil up into individual chromosomes. The chromosomes are made up of two sister chromatids that are identical copies of the same DNA, which are joined together at the hip, or in scientific terms, the centromer. There are two chromosomes for the same code of DNA. For example, there is a chromosome from the father for hair and a chromosome for the mother for hair in a human cell. Those two chromosomes do not have the same DNA, but are both chromosomes coding for hair color. That pair of chromosomes are called a homologous pair. In a procedure called synapsis, homologous chromosomes bond, which is called the tetrad. In the tetrad, the spot where the two chromosomes overlap is called the crossing over point. The crossing over point is important because it is where genetic shuffling happens in the chromosomes. Without the crossing over points, evolution would never happen because DNA 
would not change from parent to offspring, allowing survival of the fittest to occur. Also, the spindle fiber starts to form from the centrioles, and the centrioles start to move away from each other toward the poles of the cell. The nucleus disappears and the nuclear envelope breaks apart. You can now also see the chromosomes under a light microscope. Next, the tetrads line up on the metaphase plate, which is equidistant from the two pairs of centrioles. The spindle fiber is completely formed and is attached to either side of the tetrads. Anaphase, the fourth step, begins with the spindle fiber contracting into the centrioles. The sister chromatids remain attached, but the tetrads split up. The cell begins to elongate, ready to be split. The chromosomes are now at the poles of the cell. The cell continues to elongate and is almost ready to be divided. Nuclei and nuclear envelopes begin to appear around the chromosomes. The cell is split into two daughter cells. The daughter cells are haploid cells because the homologous pairs were split up during anaphase 1. The sister chromatids are still intact. There is a brief interphase where the nuclear envelope reforms and then the second major part of meiosis begins. Prophase 2 is very similar to prophase 1, except synapsis does not happen. The centrioles begin to move apart from each other and begin to form the spindle fiber. The chromosomes begin to move towards the middle of the cell. During metaphase 2, the sister chromatids are aligned onto the metaphase plate as they were in metaphase 1. The spindle fiber is complete and attached to either side of the sister chromatids. Anaphase 2 is a little different than anaphase 1. In anaphase 2, the sister chromatids detach and move away from each other. The split chromosomes begin to move towards the centrioles as the spindle fiber contracts. The cell also begins to elongate. The chromosomes arrive at the poles of the cell. Nuclei and nuclear envelopes begin to form around the chromosomes. The spindle fiber disappears. The cells are almost ready to be divided. The cells split and there are now four different cells created from the original. Each cell is a haploid cell with a differing single set of chromosomes. The cells are now ready for sexual reproduction. Well, that really isn't that complicated. I know. But where does meiosis happen? Meiosis happens in sexual reproductive organs, the testicles and the ovaries. In the testicles, four sperm cells are created from meiosis, and in the ovaries, one egg cell is created and three polar bodies.